In this video, we're going to go over the PTO balances page and how to adjust your employee's current PTO balances. We will be accessing the PTO pages under features. Now by now, you should have already created PTO categories and established accrual rules in the system. If you have not finished these steps, go ahead and refer back to the assignment and accrual video first. Now that we're ready to adjust employee balances, let's start out in the PTO balances page under features. Take a look at your PTO balances page. If you see NAs on any of the lines that should be accruing for an employee, do yourself a big favor. Make sure you don't click save changes at the bottom. By avoiding the save changes button on this particular page until you are completely done with the balance adjustment process, you can save yourself a lot of time and effort. Let's go ahead and adjust the balances, then we can come back and talk about the columns on this page. The balance adjustment process will be done in a page called PTO Accrual Edit. This page can be found with the rest of the PTO pages under Features, but you can also use these shortcuts to go straight to an employee's accruals. Let's start out with our first employee and that employee's first category. For the sick category, we have an annual accrual rate, so this will be a little different than a recurring accrual. When we click Edit Sick, it takes us to her accrual schedule, which is not started yet. We're going to go ahead and enter her current balance for this category. Let's say she has 16 hours currently available. Choose the date you'd like this accrual to have posted on. Enter the balance. Then add a note so that you know what this entry was for in the future. Then save changes. Beware of the delete and recalculate box. You do not ever want to check this box before saving as it will delete this manual entry and start a new schedule from January 1. If you think you may need to use delete and recalculate, we suggest you contact support first to make sure this is the best option. The annual accrual for Angela is good to go and we're ready to move to the next category. Angela is a new employee, so her hours will be posted in the Vacation 1 category until she's been with the company a bit longer. Let's say she has a balance of 10 hours in vacation. This is where setup is different from the annual accrual. For most accrual types, whatever date is in the last line of the accrual table will override the schedule. So instead of letting the accrual schedule start January 1, we are going to make the most current accrual fall on a date we want the schedule to follow. In this example, our accrual schedule is semi-monthly because our pay periods are semi-monthly, and we want the two to coincide with one another. The date you enter for the current balance will kickstart the accrual schedule. So in this case, whatever date we put here, the first accrual will start 15 days after that date. Similarly, a bi-weekly accrual will post on the same day of the week, two weeks later. Let's go ahead and look at a bi-weekly example. Most employers want accruals to post on the first or last day of the pay period. We want to set it up for the first day of the pay period. Looking at our pay periods in reports, we can reference our most current first day of a pay period. So if we enter that date, the very first system-generated accrual will post exactly two weeks later. Are you using the per hour worked or the minimum work hours features? You will almost certainly want accruals to post on the first day of the pay period. That way, the period of hours worked used to measure the accrual or the minimum requirement for the accrual will be the entire previous pay period. With this type of accrual, it is crucial that your accrual schedule is set up correctly at the very beginning. And any time you add a new employee going forward, you will want to make sure their accrual schedule is set up correctly for each category at the beginning of their employment with you. Okay, so what if you come to this page and the system has already generated accruals all the way back from January? We'll simply remove them and enter our own first entry. To delete each accrual, just highlight and delete the date. Do this for every accrual on the list and before you save, 
enter the date you want to start the accrual schedule, the current balance, and the note. Now you can save. Remember, the delete and recalculate box may seem like what you need, but it will actually stop you from overriding the schedule altogether. Angela has two more categories of vacation. Since she is a newer employee, she doesn't qualify for Vacation 2-4 to four or Vacation 5+. Plus. However, a zero accrual will still post every two weeks. So let's make sure the schedule is set correctly now so that when she crosses over into the new categories, it will continue posting on the first day of the pay period. Just as we did before, we'll enter the first day of the current pay period, a zero accrual this time, and a note to explain. Make sure to follow these steps on any future qualifying categories before moving on to the next employee. Now that our balances and accrual schedules are on track, let's go back and talk about the PTO balances page. The purpose for the this year's start date is to tell the system when to end the year's accruals and post carryover if applicable. If we had not started the accrual schedule manually, the system would have started accruals on January 1st of the current year, and adjusting the accrual schedule later would have been difficult. Each year, as the date passes, this will update to the current year. For annual accruals specifically, this date defines the yearly accrual posting. You cannot override the schedule in the accrual edit page like with the other accrual types. So you can keep the yearly accrual on January 1, or you can set it to the employee's anniversary date, depending on when you want their hours to post each year. But for all the other accrual types, we suggest keeping the January 1 date or the first day of the fiscal year. When the this year's start date crosses over to a new year, whatever was left over in the available column will transfer over to the this year's carryover column. That is, unless you have restricted carryover in the Assignment and Accruals page. The value in this year's carryover will add to the new year's accruals. When the year turns over again, this year's value will be replaced with the new year's carryover. The previous carryover is not stored in the system, so you may want to take note of all carryover balances if they will be needed for reference after the new year. The next two columns are not as commonly used. The Start Using Date column is not necessary to use unless employees will start accruing time before they're allowed to use it. The Advanced Allowed column is used to allow employees who are entering their own PTO usage to use more than what they have available. By default, if an employee is trying to enter more hours than what they currently have available, the system will stop them but putting in a value of two, for example, would allow them to use enough time to leave them with a negative two balance. As they accrue, the negative number will work its way back up to a positive. Each time you add an employee, you'll want to make sure to set the rules up, then start the accrual schedule. Remember, even if the employee doesn't qualify for the category yet, you can still enter a zero accrual on the appropriate day of your current pay period, just to get the schedule going for the future. Another page you may want to be aware of going forward is the PTO usage report under reports. This will show PTO usage for each employee and give you year to date totals. If you're wanting to view all PTO balances at once, the PTO balances page is the best place to go.